Words and language are important. And it's particularly important that we read and more importantly understand very carefully what is written, what people choose to write down. Not what they don't choose to write down, but what they do choose to write down. Diane Abbott wrote a two paragraph letter to the Observer. I've written once an opinion piece for The Guardian. My word limit I think was 500 words and it was a topic that I knew quite a lot about. I, was, uh, I had a, a lot that I could write but I had to be very specific and selective about what I wrote. It's very much like writing on Twitter and if you're somebody like me who hasn't paid for a blue tick you have a real limit on how many characters you can use to write your tweet. So what you try to do is try to think, okay, how can I write what I mean to say in the most succinct but erudite of manners? And inevitably, even if you think what you've written makes perfect sense in your head and isn't in any way demeaning or offensive or, or however it may come across, inevitably there will be somebody who will say, how dare you write, write this and think you're implying something that you didn't imply. Now it's quite possible that Diane Abbott is an anti-Semite, that Diane Abbott hates white people. These are all quite possible things. And it's quite possible that Diane Abbott did mean to say certain things that people have accused her of saying. But she didn't write any of those things in the two paragraph letter that she sent to the newspaper. Now people have said what she wrote was clumsy, wasn't the best use of words. I actually have no problem with what she wrote. What I think the biggest problem was is that she didn't expand. But again, there's a word limit. Because the biggest problem is this two paragraph letter, really a lot of it is about nuance. And unfortunately, nuance doesn't come across very well for the majority of people. The majority of people don't get nuance unless they have insight, unless they have empathy and understanding. In a way, I wish she had expanded because it left a lot of opportunity for people to think, well, what is she implying by that? She must be implying A, B or C. And most people think she was implying something negative. I read it and I didn't think that. And so what I want to do is actually break down what she's actually written. Not what people are claiming she means, but what she's actually written. Diane Abbott is not a stupid woman. She's a Cambridge graduate. She has spent decades fighting racism. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a massive Diane Abbott fan. I think she's a pretty good politician. I've met her once when I was a teacher. I was a head of citizenship. I had to provide Holocaust education. I had a Holocaust survivor coming to the school. On a personal level, I have for many years been obsessed with the Jewish culture, Jewish with Judaism. I learned Hebrew. I've been to Israel. I've been to Yad Vashem. I've been to Auschwitz, I've been to the Holocaust Museum within the Imperial War Museum, I've taken school kids there, I set up the Jewish Society in the school where I was a head of citizenship, I visited synagogues in and around London when I was at the peak of my obsession with Jewish culture and Jewish people, I, I love Israeli musicians like Miri Ben Ari, Subliminal, She Gabzo, Kletzma music, I absolutely adore. I'm not an anti-Zionist, I support the existence of the State of Israel. Do I like the current Israeli government? No, but I think to absolutely support the existence of a Jewish state. So I just want to clarify where I'm coming from there. I abhor any kind of discrimination and prejudice. I'm not using the word racism at the moment because I'm going to come to that in a minute. The Holocaust was the, talking about hierarchies, was the most despicable abhorrent, barbaric, brutal, unimaginable, violent, vicious, murderous event in human history. And I don't want to compare it to any other events, but what makes it so much more unimaginably horrific was that it only happened in the 1930s and 1940s. My parents were born three years after the end of the Holocaust, but it happened in Germany, which at the time was one of the most civilized, advanced, progressive societies on the planet, that the methods of humiliation, of torture, of death that were used were just absolutely psychopathic. I cannot even fathom how one human being can do the things that I know happened during the Holocaust to other human beings. So I'm not trying to belittle or demean what happened to Jewish people, to gypsies, to homosexuals, 
and also to black people during the Holocaust. It's also true to say that in the 1930s, 40s Germany, that the discrimination against black people, whilst severe, whilst harsh, they suffered uh, sterilization. Some of them were put into concentration camps, but they weren't treated as horrifically as the Jews. Now, thankfully, we don't live in 1930s, 1940s Germany. We now live in 2023. You guys live in the United Kingdom. That's where I'm from. I live in India now. So we live in an entirely different society where things have changed. We don't even, you don't even live in Africa, where there are countries where white people do suffer from racism. I live in India. I am treated differently regularly because I'm white, usually in a positive way. But there are times when, for instance, people think they can charge me more for things or get more out of me because I'm white. And that is a form of prejudice. But Diane Abbott, I think she's selected very carefully the words that she's used. I just think for the benefit of the majority of people who don't seem to get the nuance of what she's trying to say or have come to other conclusions about what she's implying, she probably should have expanded, but word limits. So I wanna break down what it is she's written so we can avoid any confusion, any doubt, and we can cross off some of the accusations about things that people think Diane Abbott is saying from these two paragraphs. As I say, she could be anti-Semitic, she could hate white people, she could be the most, the biggest racist on the planet, but that's not in these two paragraphs. Racism is black and white, that's the title. I don't know whether she chose that or somebody else chose that. On the piece that I wrote for The Guardian, I didn't choose the heading, somebody else did. Tomiwa Awoladi claims that Irish, Jewish and traveller people all suffer from racism. In her article, racism in Britain is not a black and white issue, it's far more complicated, which I actually agree with. It's true. But I also agree with, and think it's true, the point that Diane Abbott is making, that it's also black and white, because racism isn't always a constant. Racism occurs in different scenarios and in different contexts. They undoubtedly experience prejudice. Irish people, Jewish people, travellers have definitely experienced prejudice in different places in the world, but let's look at the UK context. In the UK, all those groups of people have been discriminated against and experienced prejudice. This is similar to racism, and the two words are often used as if they are interchangeable. So prejudice is similar to racism. She's not said that it's not racism, and she's not said that Irish, Jewish and traveller people can't suffer from racism. She said prejudice is similar to racism, and both words, prejudice and racism, are often used as if they're interchangeable, which is true. This first paragraph really is about semantics. It's about questioning the word racism and ultimately the word race, which leads you to the question, hey, well, what is race? What constitutes a race? She's At this point, she's neither said racism is better or worse than other forms of prejudice. She hasn't said that at all. She's simply saying that they've definitely suffered prejudice, and prejudice is similar to racism, and the word, two words are often used as if they're interchangeable. She's not said that they don't suffer from racism. This is a, a legitimate question to ask. As a politics student at university, I studied a course on nation states and nationalisms, and of course we looked at race. The first thing my tutor said, there is only one race, and that's the human race. The only thing that really isn't a race. Irish, well Irish is a nationality. Irish people come from the Republic of Ireland, or Northern Ireland, which are both countries called Ireland. Their ethnicity, predominantly, is Celtic, but Irish is a nationality, not a race. And again, but we tend to say they suffer from racism. We tend to say, oh, oh I say to people, oh, you've been racist against me because I'm British, which I know is inaccurate. British is not a race. British isn't what my passport says is my citizenship, not a race. Being Jewish is a complicated one. The majority of Jews actually nowadays are not religious. What all Jews have in common is, or most Jews, is that they became Jewish because they are born of a Jewish mother. That's how you become Jewish. So there is a genetic connection. This is why the term is called anti-Semitism and not anti-Jewish. Because Semites refers to, again, an ethnic group. Because, as I say, to be an Orthodox Jew, you need to be born of a Jewish mother. Now you can convert to Judaism, it's very difficult. And there are different forms of Judaism like Reform Judaism and Liberal Judaism where it's even easier to convert to those forms of Judaism. So the lines are a little bit blurred. But again, can you say 
being Jewish is a race. We do say it, but is it accurate to say that? What we can certainly say is, is they suffer from prejudice and they suffer from discrimination. Travellers, are. what does that even mean? There are different types of gypsies. There's Roma gypsy, there are Sinti, there are Irish travellers, all of which are actually of different ethnic backgrounds. Originally, travellers or gypsies came from India. The other thing here to state is that Irish people, Jewish people and travellers can all be black. There are Irish people who are black. There are Jewish people who are black. There are thousands of black Jews in Israel, mostly of Ethiopian background. And there are travellers who are brown skin. So that is the legitimate question that she's asking. Similar to racism, and she's nowhere has she stated that Irish, Jewish and travellers do not suffer from racism. She stated they definitely experience prejudice. And the terms racism and prejudice are used interchangeably. But do they mean the same thing. It is true that many types of white people with points of difference, such as redheads, can experience this prejudice. She doesn't say redheads suffer the same kind of prejudice as Irish, Jewish and travellers. She says they can also experience this prejudice. She doesn't equate it to the prejudice received by Irish, Jewish and travellers. She's just given redheads as an example. She could have said, glasses wearers, like me. I was bullied, I wore glasses. Because of the prejudice that people have about glasses wearers, that they're geeks, that they're nerds, that they're weak. But she didn't, she chose redheads. If you've been to school, in an English school, you know that redheads don't usually get an easy ride because of prejudice against redheads. But redheads are not a race. Just like, debatably, Irish people are not a race, they're a nation. Jewish people, debatably, maybe are not a race. And more specifically, it's anti-Semitism. That's why there's a word for it. It's anti-Semitism. They have a terminology. There's no term which is just called, well, you can say anti-black, but it's not a wide term that's using. When we talk about black people, we always say it's racism. You're not comparing like with like. You're saying black people and then Irish Jews and travellers. Although Irish Jews and travellers could also be black. They could also be white. So she's just giving an example of redheads as one way in which white people can experience prejudice. Because it's the whiteness that she is pointing out is the element that makes their race, is them being white. Because in the same extent, that's what people say about black people. Part of me wishes we had a better word than racism because I think race is an inaccurate word. It should maybe be more accurate to say colorism, but that's not a term that's widely used. So really we should say, you're being colorist. Of course, there's also history, the use of the word, the way the word has been used. We tend to use racism, but it's fine to question that. The point of language, why we have over 250,000, I think at last count, words in the English language is so we can be as specific as possible. We could just say Jews, black people, travellers, redheads, gypsies, they all suffer from hate, which is true. What we have is we've come up with other terminologies to be more specific about what kind of hate and discrimination and prejudice it is that they're suffering. And for Jews, we came up with anti-Semitism. Black people, it tends to be called racism. Because for some reason, we conflate colour with race. And if you're going to conflate colour with race, then really you should be consistent. If you're going to say black people, then on the other hand, it then needs to be white people. And white people do suffer racism in black dominated countries like Zimbabwe, for example. But they are not all their lives subject to racism would be wrong if we were talking about a white person who lives in Zimbabwe, who could indeed all their life suffer from racism. But that's not what she's talking about. She lives in Britain. She's a British politician. She's talking about black people in Britain and these other groups in Britain. Black people can't go leave their house, take off their skin. They can't escape from being black. In the same way a Jewish person can't escape from being ethnically Jewish. They may not believe in the religion of Judaism, follow it, or even identify themselves as being particularly Jewish. But 
ethnically they are or will still be classed as being Jewish. And they can't escape that. But the vast majority of Jews, it is not obvious by looking at them that they are Jewish. Most Jews who live in England are white. So they therefore, in that element of their lives, belong to the dominant group or the dominant race, whether we accurately or inaccurately use that term. That is how we tend to use the term race, is we refer mostly to colour. In, in this context, if you're going to use it for black people, then you've got to use it for white people. Most Jews, most Irish people, most travellers are white. If they're in a room of people and there's a sea of faces, there are white people, there are black people, there are brown skinned people, it is far more easy to identify the black skinned people and the brown skinned people than if I say to you, okay, now identify the Jews, now identify the Irish people. A policeman can identify a black person in a car far more easily than they can identify a Jewish person in a car. Somebody who is an out and out racist can identify a black person far more easily than a Jewish person. Even if they hate Jews as much as they hate black people, most racists are not the smartest people anyway. And they tend to just go with what their eyes see. And their eyes can see black. Their eyes can't always see Jew. Or they can't always see Irish. And they can't always see traveller. It is a pretty accurate statement to say they are not all their lives subject to racism. At no point does she say they are not subject to racism? She doesn't say that. She says they are not all their lives subject to racism. Black people all their lives are black. They don't have the option not to be black, unless they're Michael Jackson. But even then, they don't have the option not to be black. They can't take it off. Now, even if you want to refer to the Second World War, there were Jews who tried to pretend to be Germans. There are Jews who don't look like your archetypal Jew, whatever that is, who don't have dark hair, who don't have uh, olive skin. There are blonde, blue-eyed Jews. There are redhead Jews. It's easier for them to pull off not being Jewish and to assimilate with the majority group than a black person who doesn't have that option. But let's just read that statement again. They are not all their lives subject to racism. She doesn't say they're not subject to racism. She doesn't say they're not subject to prejudice. She already said they undoubtedly suffer prejudice. But they are not all their lives subject to racism because the majority of them are white. And the majority of racists are fucking stupid. They don't see Jewish. Unless you're a Hasidic Jew wearing Jewish clothing or you're somebody going into a Jewish school and they want to target Jewish people. It's like a homosexual. You can't tell a homosexual just by looking at them, but there are homophobes who will target gay clubs because that's where homosexuals tend to congregate. But you put a homosexual in front of me or a group of people, they you know, tell me which ones are the homosexuals. You can't tell just by looking at them. But if you said to me, tell me which one of those, of those people are black, I'd be like, oh, they're in disguise. They've changed their skin. No, they can't do that. They are always black. Their blackness follows them all their life. The Jewishness of a Jewish person does follow them all their life, but not every moment of the day. They can either pretend not to be Jewish. They can hide their Jewishness. They don't, their Jewishness is a much more subtle thing. And they are not all their lives subject to racism. Then she gave some examples. In pre-Civil Rights America, Irish people, Jewish people and travellers were not required to sit at the back of the bus. Because at that moment, and this is why it's called racism is black and white, that was when racism in America was black and white. That was all that mattered. Are you black? You sit at the back of the bus. Are you white? You sit at the front of the bus. Oh yeah, but I'm Jewish. Doesn't matter, you sit, are you white? You sit at the front. Are you black Jew? You sit at the back. Oh yeah, but I'm Irish. Are you a black Irish person? You sit at the back of the bus. Are you the Irishness, the Jewishness, the travelishness wasn't even relevant. It was the colour of their skin. In apartheid South Africa, these groups were allowed to vote. Blacks weren't allowed to vote. Were Jews allowed to vote? Yes. Are people of Irish descent allowed to vote that lived in South Africa? Yes. Were people who were of, of traveller descent allowed to vote? In, I don't know how many there are now in South Africa, but as long as they were white, yes. Apartheid was about black 
and white, and in the middle, of course, there was coloreds, but essentially it was based on color. Are you black? You live there. You have these rights and you don't have these rights. Are you white? You have these rights and you can do these things and you can live there. Black, white. Yeah, but I'm Jewish. Doesn't matter. You're white. Yeah, but I'm Irish. Doesn't matter. You're white. You live there. Yeah, but I'm of traveler descent. Doesn't matter. You're white. You live there. You do the same as all the white people. It might be that within that white community, there are people who are anti-Semitic. So at that moment in their lives, they're suffering the prejudice. But they're not suffering the prejudice for being white in how they can vote in the other aspects of their life, not their whole life. But in that instance, black people suffered their whole life because they were black. And at the height of slavery, of course, she's referring to British colonial slavery. There were no white seeming people manacled on the slave ships. Of course, there's been different types of slavery at different times. And there's even slavery now of different groups of people. She's referring, referring to British colonial slavery because she's British and we're talking about Britain. And of course, there were no non-white people who were manacled. If there were Jewish people who may have been slaves at that time, it was because they were black. If there were Irish people who were slaves at the time, which there weren't, that they would have been black. If there was anybody of traveler descent who would have been manacled and put on a slave ship, it would have been because they were black, but there weren't any. I've read you. Now the whole statement, did she imply a few things? Maybe. Do I know what she implied? Not, sh not entirely. I've read what she's written. At no point does she say the prejudice redheads receive is as bad as the prejudice Jews, Irish people and travellers receive. No. At no point has she said that Jews, Irish people and travellers are not subject to racism. She hasn't said that. All she said is they are not subject to it all their lives. There is no statement here which is anti-Semitic. Nothing. It is utterly irresponsible and libelous for anybody to make the claim that she is either anti-Semitic based on anything she's written here, that she's creating some kind of hierarchy. She hasn't. She's not said racism is worse or better or whatever. She's not said the racism black people receive is worse or better. She's stating the fact that black people have to deal with it their whole lives. It might be they deal with their whole lives, but it's, but it's generally okay. It's not. But it could be the statement that they deal with racism their whole lives, but the level of racism they receive is okay. The Jewish people don't get, have to deal with it their whole lives, but when they do deal with it, it's bloody horrific. That could also be true. She doesn't say that here, but that could be true. She doesn't make either of those claims, but you, it could be implied. You don't know. That could be what she means. She doesn't say that. You can only go by what she's written. Now, there are times I watched Diane Abbott and I thought, oh, what the hell are you saying? You know, she said things that I think are stupid. There's things that are clumsy. You know, I don't agree with her all the time. But I cannot, as a conscious, intelligent human being, based on what she's written, the few lines she's written here, come to the conclusion that she's anti-Semitic, that she thinks that the Irish Jewish and Trump would never experience racism, that the racism or prejudice that black people receive is worse than the prejudice or racism that Irish, Jewish and traveller people receive. I cannot make those three statements categorically. Can I think that that's what she might be saying? Yes. Is that what I think she is saying? No. You can only go by what somebody has written. And the fact that so many people, Labour politicians, I, and I'm certainly not a Corbynista. I, there were some things I liked about Jeremy Corbyn, there were some things I just didn't like about him. I'm a very strong pro-European. I didn't like his stance on Europe. I was excited when Keir Starmer came into power. I thought, good, this is a good positive change. But actually, I've been even more disappointed with him. I can't vote for Labour at the moment. I think he's moved far to the right. He's trying to pander to the, to the right-wingers, to the Brexiteers, to that mentality. And I think he's wrong. I don't, I, I'm very disappointed by Keir Starmer. I used to vote Labour. I couldn't vote Labour now. So I'm not a Corbynista. I'm not, I'm not defending Diane Abbott's hot everything she's ever said. All I'm trying to state is in this two paragraph letter to the observer, you cannot categorically tell me that anything she's written here is anti-Semitic, claims that Jews, Irish people and travellers are never on the receiving end of racism. And even if they do or do not receive racism, right? 
She doesn't even claim that the prejudice they receive is either better than or worse than racism. She doesn't even make that claim. She just make, she's just making the point that maybe it's not called racism. Maybe it's called something else. Maybe race isn't the most accurate word, which I've already made the case that it's not. She doesn't even make that point. Prejudice is awful in whatever form it takes. You know, and one is not better or worse than the other. And she doesn't make that claim here. And she doesn't say the prejudice that redheads receive as an example of prejudice that white people do receive, that's not racism, but it's a form of prejudice based on the way they look, the religions they follow, viewpoints they have, lots of different reasons, disabilities that they have, visual things they have, all kinds of reasons they could receive prejudice. She doesn't state that it's worse than or equal to the prejudice that Irish people, Jewish people and travellers receive. She's just given that as one example of prejudice. Please, if you are a responsible journalist, if you are a politician who understands how the meaning of words is important, please do not put words into Diane Abbott's mouth. Do not make the assumption that Diane Abbott was saying something which she didn't say. It's not fair and it's not right. And frankly, it is libelous. Yes, she has apologised. I'm sure she felt pressurised into doing so. I'm sure having listened to comments that she felt, oh, maybe I could have said it in another way. But I still don't think anything she's, anything she's written is wrong. Anything she's written is insightful. Anything that she has written is anti-Semitic. Anything that she's written says that there is a hierarchy of hate or racism or discrimination or prejudice or whatever, she hasn't said any of those things. Do I know for sure that she doesn't think those things? No. Do I know for sure that, that she might not be the biggest anti-Semite, that she might not think that racism against black people is worse? And I don't know that. I, but I cannot say that by reading this. Read. Understand. Don't make claims about people that are factually incorrect. And if you think she's any of those things, prove it. Because you cannot prove it from this two-paragraph letter. Thank you for your time.